This program is made possible by funding from the Illinois Arts Council, a state agency, by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by viewers like you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Becky Cramblett, your host for State of the Arts. On our program today, we're going to take an inside look into the world of writing music. Now, I will tell you that I can sit down and play anything that someone else has written and sing it with some degree of respectability. But to write a song, to take your innermost feelings and thoughts, your joys, your fears, put it down on a piece of paper, add music, and then even more frightening, share it with the world, that's a whole nother story. And we're going to get that story from a couple of singer-songwriters today. Later in the program, we'll go to Winchester and talk with Jeffrey Davidsmeyer. But first, we head to Rushville to talk with Ken Carlisle. Well, Ken, here we are. I'd love to know all about your, your music, your career, your whole life. So take me from the beginning. How'd you get started in music? Ooh, wow, that's a long time ago. <laughs> uh, well, I was in uh, grade school, and I was raised in Chicago. And... My friend, Frank Zelenka, who lived down the block, he was in high school, and of course I idolized him, and he got a guitar. Needless to say, I thought I better get a guitar soon also. And then uh, started playing, and I took three lessons uh, from a guy named Milton Predovic. I remember his name. You remember everybody's name. Well, <laughs> I, don't, I remember lots of old stuff, but I might not remember this. But, uh, Milton Predovic, and then I just went, I went crazy, and that's all I did from then on. It was just an addiction. It really was. Really? And then um, uh, played, had a little band in high school called the Warlocks, and we played, and then uh, came down to uh, Macomb area, mm -hmm. and then got in a blues band, kind of, and played, and all, all the time writing, all the time. And then uh, after that, I got into a, a kind of a, I'd say kind of like a Grateful Dead type band, a mm -hmm. kind of a jam band mm -hmm. sort of a thing, and we did original music then too. And then I got involved with a, a band, uh, it was country western band around here, and I really loved that. And then I got involved with a guy, uh, Buck Owens. I don't know if you know who Buck Owens. Yeah, is? heard All of right. him. Yeah. All right, Buck Owens. I don't know him personally. Okay, well, Buck Owens, his steel player, came here in Topeka, in Illinois, and he started a Opry, a 2200-seat yeah. Opry. And um, uh, I ended up being the band leader for that. And I did that and we played with all kinds of um, Nashville stars every weekend. That's what we did. We opened up for them or they'd use us for a band. We'd read charts. And uh, that, I wasn't writing too much then. But then during that time, uh, the core of that band, we wanted to play more because that was just a weekend thing. So we formed uh, the Cadillac Cowboys. And we started playing. And within a year, the Opry folded. <laughs> and within a year, the Cowboys were paying 300 nights a year. It just, and wow, you we did just, that for a long time. I, uh, yeah, oh, till uh, 75 till 99 Wow, was the Cowboys, yeah. <laughs> and then I started doing this uh, on my own, which I, I enjoy. It's real simple, yeah. and you don't have to deal with anybody else. And, and, and writing all the time. The Cowboys did lots of original music of all styles, and then I do um, original music, lots of different styles. You know? Let's talk about that, because I'm kind of fascinated by that whole thing, being able to take what's inside of you and put it down on paper and put it to music and make it work. I'm somewhat fascinated by it myself. <laughs> uh, you know, do it a bunch of different ways. I think you talk to anybody that writes. And sometimes, literally, you wake up in the middle of the night and I, my wife knows what I'm doing because I'm taking off for a tape recorder. Because you'll lose it and you'll just have something. And, and sometimes it just takes forever. Um, you do know. you sit down with the intention of writing a song or are you just walking along, getting ready for bed, taking a shower, and ideas come to you? Mostly the latter. Um, all of a sudden, I'll just stop what I'm doing and go for either a machine that can uh, take it down, record mm -hmm. it, or I'll just take off and get paper, anything. I mean, I've written them on anything. I just get something in my mind really quick, and I'll write it down. Otherwise, it'll go. And also, uh, with, if you get it taped, I'll lose a melody like that, and mm -hmm. everybody does. You'll have this idea, and then sometimes I'll just sit down there with, um, and get a melody and play my guitar part and, and record it. And then I just, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, or whatever yeah. it might be to that. And then uh, I'll totally forget it and put it away, and I'll get up the next day or uh, two days later, and I'll go back there and just say, new song, you know. Mm -hmm. 
and I'll, oh yeah, and I'd totally forgotten about it. And sometimes it's good and you want to keep continuing with it. And sometimes the wonderful thing is it has an erase button. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like an electronic trash can. It wasn't as much inspiration as you thought. Apparently huh? not. So, yeah. So that's uh, how that happens. And I don't often write with other people, although years ago I used to. Um, I had a friend named Ronnie Kimbrough who's down in Nashville now. And uh, he stayed down there. But when we were younger, we'd write songs and you know we'd always be especially with the country western thing it was all this idea of write a hit song you know and, yeah. and so we'd write and we'd go down to nashville and back then it was different than now you could actually go in to uh publishers right and they'd let you in and they'd listen to you and uh, we'd bring them tapes cassette tapes <laughs> cassette and, what? cassette yeah <laughs> yeah right and uh we'd go in there and we got some of our songs published and uh, loretta lynn's company took a few of our songs and she had some of her writers work on a little bit, but nothing ever really became any of that. But I did write with him and a couple other guys. Uh, Chris Vallello, we wrote with him, and Lonnie Ratliff, who's still in Nashville now. He, uh, he works with people from Europe who want to have kind of a Nashville sound. and uh, He once took one of our songs to record it and somehow got it to be a, a, a top ten song in Finland or somewhere over there. We've never been to Finland. I know nothing about it, but uh, we got it in the... Finished charts. He sent it to us. It well, and the way that music gets out and around today is so different from you know yeah. even twenty years ago. Right. With digital. Everything's different. Back then, we had forty fives, mm -hmm. and we had forty fives that we would uh, job out to jukeboxes, and we'd sell them to. Uh, they're big distributors, and they're in, in different parts of the United States, and they sell to then individual people around here who might service back then. Uh, like vending machines, but back then it would be jukeboxes. And we would sell them to uh, those folks and had quite a, had a novelty song once that was actually sold all over the United States and actually that actually made money by selling the records mm -hmm. and the mechanicals. There's no uh, royalty for So that. what was the song? Uh, it's uh, not TV friendly. It was kind of a oh. funny song. But, <laughs> okay, but, uh, never mind. <laughs> it was, uh, uh, oh, it wasn't bad, but it's not TV friendly. But it was uh, kind of like a humorous song. Right. And uh, it actually did very well. But So back to the writing process, mm -hmm. the, the answer to which comes first, the words or the music, it, it varies, right? Sometimes it's a chicken, sometimes it's the egg. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I'll write something down, uh, some words that I, that I enjoy. Uh, it might even be one word. And, uh, you know, just I like the ring of that word. And sometimes I'll, I've been playing guitar all my life, and I'll just sit around and play, and I'll get some kind of thing. And sometimes even I hear it in my head, uh, a melody or something, and I, I write charts. Uh, they're called Nashville charts. They're number charts. Mm -hmm. They're not notes. Right. But I'll get uh, a chord progression in my head, so I'll just run down and I'll write um, the numbers, right. the, uh, write a verse and a chorus of that. And then my own little notation system, which makes sense to me because I don't really read music, but I can go back and kind of understand it. And then I'll look at that and I'll hear that in my head again and then I'll get some words and maybe match something up and um, put it down and then come to the machine and try and... And how does this machine work? Well, the, it's, it's very simple. It's, it's kind of like, um, like a mini recording studio. And I think everybody who writes now uses one of these. Uh, you put a track down, and like this one, you can have eight tracks and mix it, or maybe even more than that. I don't know. I never get that far. Mm -hmm. And then you can go back if you just had a guitar part on it, some part, and then you can go back and record a vocal on it or work, and then put it, try another one or try something else, and then see which one works, and it saves it for you. And it's just a wonderful thing. So you can layer different instruments yes. and even vocals. Yes. You can do to, harmony parts, everything. Yeah. Just like a recording a studio. Yeah. yeah. And, and years and years ago, they used to have them on reel to reels, and I had sure. one of those in the 70s, and I was one of the first people to have one of those, and it was called a, a dough coder uh, in a home unit. You mm -hmm. could have recording studios had them. But, and uh, that really got me going on writing because you could get your stuff done and then start putting parts. And I could sit of a winter and just all day long and write with this old reel-to-reel -reel dough coder. And then I moved on to a TAC four track, and then gradually these machines came out. And nowadays there are even people who actually make a saleable product on these. It's pretty amazing. Pretty amazing machine, but it helps the writing process. Do you have something specific, topic-wise, that you find yourself writing about more than others? I do, uh, I do, because since the the '70s, I've mostly played in more of a country genre, mm -hmm. and when and I'm kind of a historian in my head about a lot of old country songs and read the 
I've got books in there telling the history of how this guy wrote that song or what he got. And I played lots of uh, clubs, bars, honky-tonks, fairs, uh, what, whatever, casinos, uh, shows, openings for country stars and stuff. So the country was really what got into my head. And of course with the country there's like love songs and cheating songs and bar room songs yeah. and, and yeah. all those kind of things like that. So I may tend towards that area. Yeah. You know. Although well, anything happens. You know. I would love to hear one of your songs. So why don't we let you get set up and yeah, let's I can do sing that. a song. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to do this song and I'll tell you the story behind it. And I'm going to do this song because it's early in the day and it's kind of easy to sing. So <laughs> I picked this. But this is a song called Evangeline. I've always been fascinated by the word Evangeline. And this is a story of a guy who is talking with a man at a bar. And uh, as the night goes on, he starts talking more and more. And this guy still starts to tell him about this woman that he's met and he's having such a good time with. And gradually this fellow starting to realize that uh, that's his wife. And her name is Evangeline. Evangeline, you got something to tell me, Evangeline. You got something to say, Evangeline. Well, I know what you've been doing, Evangeline. Where'd you go yesterday? Friday night down at Muddy's. They got a real hot psychical band. I drink a little bourbon whiskey and I'm talking to this man. He tells me about this woman. Oh man, he had a good time. But then I realized that that woman he had was my Evangeline. You got something to tell me, Evangeline. You got something to say, Evangeline. Well, I know what you've been doing, Evangeline. Where'd you go yesterday? So I'll be going down to the river And I'll be back when the day is through You can think about it, girl Just what you gonna do I ain't gonna be your loving fool Ain't gonna be your clown Evangeline, you're gonna have to change Or I won't be sticking around hey, Evangeline You got something to tell me, Evangeline You got something to say, Evangeline well, I know what you've been doing, Evangeline. Where'd you go yesterday? Evangeline. 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 Evangeline, Evangeline. And that's the story of Evangeline. <laughs> Ken, you have a smaller guitar here. Yeah, <laughs> it's my fiddle. A fiddle. How'd you get started playing that? Uh, actually, it's it's kind of neat. I um, they used to have square dances around here, and there was an old guy named Mel Weaver. And uh, Mel used to call square dances. And his son, Danny Weaver, and I used to play fiddle behind him. We'd sit in a chair. We didn't really know what we were doing, but we had a ball. And uh, we played all these hoedowns. They had even roller skate uh, square dances around here. It was great. It was a great thing back then. Yeah. So I, I, a lot of times I write little, uh, little ditties on the fiddle, and I'll just do a little one here. Yeah, and it's just a little thing called a scab holler. All right. <laughs>
hope you enjoyed the music of Ken Carlisle. After our visit with Ken, we made our way over to Winchester and met up with Jeffrey Davidsmeyer. Jeff is another talented artist who has been singing, writing, and playing in bands for quite some time. I began by asking Jeff how he got his start writing music. Uh, probably since, uh, seriously, since about 89, 1989 or so. so I tried in college and never really completed anything, but then it just all kind of came together and 1989 and 90 and 91 I started writing and more, you know, folky acoustic Have you stuff. always been into music, played an instrument, sang, whatever? Yeah, I, uh, all my sisters, I have three older sisters and they played piano and my oldest played clarinet and uh, always loved music and couldn't wait to play the piano and mm -hmm. I'm more of a piano player than a guitar player but write a lot of the stuff on guitar. So. Right, and so tell me about your travels once you started um, performing and singing? And well, it's mainly local. Uh, I have had the opportunity with uh, my wife's nephew's band. Uh, we played the uh, Keokuk Blues Fest last year and I played mm -hmm. keyboards for them. And we've done some work in Hannibal and down in St. Louis at Blueberry Hill. And so we've played generally this location for, right. for the most part. Springfield, uh, Quincy, and this, this whole area. Right. And talk about the um actual writing of the music, mm -hmm. what's that like for you? What, describe the process. Well, it's, it's kind of different depending, most of the time, I come up with maybe a melody or I, I've got an idea musically in my mind. Mm -hmm. And the chords and all that kind of thing come pretty easily. It's the word, wordsmithing that really? I have to struggle with. And, but there are times that it all kind of comes together and it's usually um, within just a few minutes, just a real short time. Um, I mean, within 10 or 15, 20 minutes and the whole thing's pretty much complete and then you kind of rework it and mess with it, but it goes <laughs> so pretty quick. You have these moments where you go, I feel a song coming on, get some paper. <laughs> well, sometimes, you know, you're <laughs> driving in the car or whatever and you have a thought or you hear something and you're like, oh, that, that would work. And, uh, and hopefully you remember it long enough. Yeah. And I, I actually carry a little recorder around now, sure. just in case. So, but the words are the the words are the thing I struggle with. I'm not mm. much of a word. So the music does, for you comes before the mm -hmm. words most of yeah, the time. Yeah, most of the time. Yeah. What do you find is typically your inspiration for a song? Is there something that kind of stands out to you, or is it a little of everything? It, it probably a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, I there's it seems like there's some challenges that I sometimes sing about or talk about, but I always like to end somehow in a positive way. Mm -hmm. I, I do, I do uh, really work on having something positive at the end of the song. So if there was tragedy and impending doom, you know, right. or whatever. Um, <laughs> you like a happy ending. <laughs> yeah, before it's all over with, there's a solution or a possible solution and there's, mm -hmm. there's positive things that are, that are done before it's all over with. What's probably the <clears throat> longest period of time that you've spent working on any one song? Hmm. Um, you know, it just kind of depends. I mean, I'm <clears throat> I'm working more um, right now. I'm I'm I've got the new CD, uh, and I'm kind of in a mode of trying to write now. So I'm probably working more than I ever have on. I've got tidbits of stuff that I'm going to go back and start working on. Mm -hmm. So. But a time frame, again, it's usually 15, 20 minutes or so, and it's done, and I'll come up the steps or come home and play something for my wife, Teresa, and then it's more or less done, you know? Right. And they, once you play, to what I have found out, once you perform, it kind of takes a life of its own, and after performing <laughs> it for a while live, it may sound completely different from what you started with. But sometimes, it's right. not always, but sometimes. Well, and I think you find that even um, with other artists whose songs you hear on the radio and then you attend their concerts, they've sort of mm -hmm. tweaked the song along the yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. You said you started writing in the late 80s, and technology mm -hmm. has changed drastically mm -hmm. since then. How have you used that to write music? Uh, probably haven't. Really? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, it's the old pencil and paper. Yeah. Uh, well, that's actually, where your inspiration is, right? Well, actually, the, this little digital recorder mm -hmm. has helped because you can kind of carry it around. It's like this big. It's not very big at all. And right. years ago, you might have had a cassette player or something. But once I get going on a song, I always try and record it so I can remember it later. And I'll write chords right. down and that kind of thing. 
um, but to remember the melody or some words that maybe come up at the at the time, I'll go ahead and record it, and it'll be, you know, stuck away there. So what about the equipment that you use for recording? Obviously, that's digital. <clears throat> it right? is. I uh, a few years ago, I ended up buying a, a Pro Tool system, and with a computer, and we built a little studio in our basement. And so Teresa and I, my wife and I, made. I think we've made about three CDs down there. And we used to just give them to friends and family. And mm -hmm. her dad always liked a hymn, uh, like a spiritual song. So we'd always end it with some like Amazing Grace or a, or a hymn that he would like. And it was fun because you could, you know, you could track a guitar part, and then I could sit there and put piano on and right. other instruments. Sort of build and, the song yeah, as you went along. Build the song up, and there was, you know, no pressure, no time. And if you did it today, great. If you finished it tomorrow, fantastic. But you know, when you're in a studio situation like this latest CD, you got, you know, the clock ticking away sure. and you want to get it done and, and, and down, so. Mm -hmm. What, um, what would you say has been maybe your favorite song that you've ever written? Oh, Do you have boy. one? No. You knew I'd ask that, I, right? No, yeah, I, no, <laughs> I don't. I, uh, I don't know. I don't know what would be my favorite one. Hard to uh, pick? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. uh, not that they're all great, but it's just that um, maybe it depends on the situation. Why, and this, this might be a, a bit of a deep question, but why do you think it is that you write music? Is it some kind of a release for you or? No, I just, it, it must be, I, I, don't, I don't know. Um, but it's a, it's a, I can't hardly screw a light bulb in and I can't do any carpentry <laughs> work, you know. I'm about as unhandy as anybody. <laughs> Um, so when I do, or when I write something, I can see, I think it's partly I can see it and hear it and mm -hmm. it's something I've done because like I said, I can't do any carpentry work. I can't work on anything. I don't know how. And that might be, might be why. Have you ever collaborated with other writers on songs? Uh, Teresa and I wrote a song out here called Taking Our Time, which is the name of this new CD. Mm -hmm. um, the band, the New Goat Ensemble. Um, Which is your current band. Yeah, well, and we, we only play a couple of times a year now. We're hoping to play more. But as a group, we do a lot of improvisation. Mm -hmm. And we've come up with songs as a group that um, more of the guitar player will come in with a, a, some sort of a riff or whatever you call it, a, a guitar part. And sure. I've written the words or something over it. What, how would you describe your music? Well, it's, it's mainly it's like an acoustic folk rock, mm -hmm. I would call. And uh, even though the Goats are more of an electric band, it's still folk rock. And, even, and we even do some reggae stuff that I wrote a song, um, Political People, back in the mid-'80s. We do it, and it's a reggae style of song. We do a, kind of a hard rock song that's kind of silly. Um, we have but, to have fun, right? Yeah, it's it's fun, and and you know we never know how it's going to turn out. But uh, um, I would say it's all just a good upbeat and listening type music. Now your wife sings with you on occasion, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And and can I twist your arm and get the two of you to maybe sing a song for we, us? We could probably do one. All yeah. right. Well, let's let you get set up, and we'll okay. do that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Looking out the window of this lonely old cafe Another cup of coffee, I best be on my way The waitress, she came over, let me steal her pen So I could rearrange all these thoughts of you again I write this letter with only you in my mind I hope we're together till the end of time Don't know the future but right now it looks fine Won't you please be mine Won't you please be mine Till the end of time David and Goliath weren't the best of friends Something told that giant that David's gonna win 
So those of you with your masters, those with your PhDs, will you kindly explain to me what war really means? I write this letter with only you in my mind. I hope we're together till the end of time. Don't know the future, but right now it looks fine. Won't you please be mine? Won't you please be mine? Till the end of time. The coffee cup is empty, the road is calling me. I give that girl a dollar and the pen she gave to me. I fold up another letter, I put it near my heart. Then I get back home to you, I read it from the start. I write this letter with only you in my mind. We're together until the end of time. Don't know the future, but right now it looks fine. Won't you please be mine? Won't you please be mine? Won't you please be mine? Till the end of time. That's all we have time for on this edition of State of the Arts. We'd like to thank Jeffrey Davidsmeyer of Winchester and Ken Carlisle of Rushville for all of their hospitality today, inviting us into their homes and sharing their music with us. We hope you've enjoyed our program. I'm Becky Cramblett. Thanks for watching. This program is made possible by funding from the Illinois Arts Council, a state agency by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by viewers like you. Thank you.